Dzień dobry, dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Dzień dobry. Witamy serdecznie. I think it's a time, time to begin. Allora cominciamo un'altra volta con italiano. Buonasera, mi sembra che siamo, siamo lì a tutti. Mi presento ancora, sono Agata Gavlak, vicepresidente, vicepresidente, mi dispiace, per la scienza e l'istruzione. Eh, a nome eh, del presidente della facoltà di architettura del Politecnico di Poznan, il professor Eva Pruszewicz Szyplinska, sono lieta di dare il benvenuto a tutti voi alla terza giornata del nostro seminario Italo-Polacco, Spazio, Forma, Idea. È un onore accogliere anche oggi i professori dal Politecnico di Milano, dal Politecnico di Varsovia e di Cracovia e tutti i graditi ospiti. L'attore oggi è la professoressa Raffaella Neri eh, del Politecnico di Milano. Avremmo il grande piacere di partecipare a una conferenza del titolo La Torre Verasca a Milano 1950-1958. Eh, sto aspettando impazientemente questa conferenza sull'edificio di Milano che adoro, ma prima la professoressa Gata Bonenberg presenterà l'oratore. Adesso qualche okay. parola okay. in inglese. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Agata Gaulag, Vice Dean for Science and Education. It's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of the Dean of the Faculty of Architecture of Poznan University of Technology, Professor Eva Pruszewicz Szyplinska, to welcome you here today. Uh, on the third day of Polish-Italian seminar Spazio, Spazio Forma Idea. Uh, I give a, a warm welcome to all our special guests and participants, especially um, the professor from Politecnico di Milano, yes. Warsaw, Warsaw and Krakow University of Technology. Uh, today we have a Professor Rafaela Neri from Milan, She will be speaking this, uh, this evening on the Velasca Tower in Milan, 1950-1958. Uh, I myself am very much looking forward to this lecture since the Velasca Tower is my favorite building in Milan. But now, uh, Professor Agata Bonenberg will introduce our today's speaker. Back to you, Professor Bonenberg. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me well. Um, i would like to uh, introduce uh, Professor Rafaela Neri, who, uh, by the way, I also want to underline that I am really, really looking forward very much to this, uh, to this speech and to this encounter today. And I really hope that uh, we uh, will have uh, uh, also a very good discussion after, uh, after your, your, your lecture, Professor. Um, Well, today we welcome uh, Professor Rafaela Neri, who is uh, an architect uh, who has graduated uh, at Politecnico di Milano uh, and who has done uh, her uh, PhD studies uh, in Venice. Uh, now she is a full professor in the School of Urbanistic Architecture and Construction uh, Engineering at Politecnico di Milano. Uh, and since uh, 2003, she uh, takes a part uh, in the Collegio Docenti for a PhD in architectural uh, composition uh, at uh, UF in Venice. Her research um, mainly focuses on architectural theories, uh, particularly on the problem of urban project in the modern city and on the rule of the construction and architectural design. Uh, she participates uh, also in many architectural composition, uh, competitions and uh, she is a winner in uh, 1996 of the National Architectural Prize uh, Luigi Cosenza. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Uh, I present uh, to you Professor Raffaella Neri and Professor, I am forwarding you uh, the screen, the channel, uh, and I welcome you to, uh, um, to start your, your, your lecture. Thank you very much to everybody. For, thank you very much for your presentation, Agatha. And... Uh, Sorry, will I just to move this? Okay. Uh, 
And I think everybody knows, uh, in a way, the Velasca Tower as a symbol of modern architecture of Milan. It was built after the Second World War, as everybody knows, where when Italy and Milan in particular were in a delicate and important phase of uh, their history. As one of the major theaters of the bloody clash between allied and fascist forces, the country was still in ruins and tending to its wounds. Hence, the priority was modernization and the creation of a new infrastructure, particularly in Milan, that had been heavily bombed during World War II and therefore required uh, uh, extensive reconstruction. Economy and industry were fast resurging. The city was expanding at an impressive rate and its cultural climate was extremely lively and stimulating. As a hothouse for ideas and experiments in all the realms of art, science and philosophy, Milan equally offered an ideal testing ground for the development of architectural theory and the experimentation of the modern movement's key issues, as well as at the later stage during the 50s, for the questioning of its more time-worn tenets and therefore for its theoretical renewal. Design for the Velasca Tower was developed in this atmosphere of exchange and cooperation that involved all the actors of physical, moral, and cultural reconstruction of Italy. So, okay. uh, the design uh, was commissioned to the BBPR firm and to renowned engineer Arturo Danusso. BBPR spelled the architect's initial of Gianluigi Banfi, Ludovico di Barbian Libelgioso, Enrico Persutti, and Ernesto Nathan Rogers. Although Banfi has died in the Gusen concentration camp just before the end of the war. Ernesto Nathan Rogers was also the most brilliant architectural theorist of his time, as well as the master of several generations of um, Milan school architects and the editor-in-chief of the famous, at the time, magazine Casabella Continuità. Arturo Danusso, uh, a professor at the Polytechnic of Milan since 1915, was a far-sighted master who blazed the trail for an entire school of uh, Italian structural engineers later famous for their works, viaducts, bridges, skyscrapers, and a huge cover space. They were Pierluigi Nervi, Riccardo Morandi, sadly famous now because of the Bridge of Genova, Sergio Musmeci, and others. Since the Velasca Tower benefited from the converging approach of architects and engineers, it will successfully reflect the identity of the city. As a passionately discussed and still debated masterpiece, it is famous, uh, the attack of Rainer Banham to the Italian architects for the tower. The tower is the result of the highest level cooperation between the most advanced architectural and engineering tools. At the same time, I think it reflects the key issues for architecture and the construction of the modern city. The Velasca Tower was one of the very first buildings to be erected in reinforced concrete in either Italy and Europe. With its 99 meters of height, it is certainly one of the best results of the mutually enriching relationship between structural research and architectural expression. In the late 1940s, when the plan for the area selected for the Velasca Tower was still in its initial phase, reinforced concrete was commonly used to build the beams and pilasters. 
almost invariably drowned in the wall structure. The new material's technical and expressive potential was still unexplored. But post-war reconstruction and the extraordinary ardor, enthusiasm, and the experimentalism in Milan, it triggered would greatly stimulate research. The very fir first Italian reinforced concrete high-rise building has been erected in uh, Brescia by Marcello Piacentini in 1932. It was uh, 57 meters tall, and uh, he, it had also benefited from Arturo Danusso, the same engineer, Arturo Danusso expertise. This building was followed um, by others, uh, higher buildings, uh, one in Genova, another one in Milan, and so on. And in this building, the key tenets of the innovative reinforced concrete construction allowed for higher buildings, but failed to provide a recognizable expressive quality. At the time, uh, office and especially housing towers uh, were new building types in terms of both their relation with the city and uh, the construction technology they required. The only models then available were the iron frame skyscrapers built in American cities and designed for contexts that had little in common with the European cities and their foundational structures. As a result, the very first high rises erected in uh, Europe were inspired by the iron construction technologies and forms used for the American counterparts. So one of the issue is uh, how and why did reinforced concrete emerge as an alternative option? The very first plans for the construction of the tower uh, on its site date back to the late uh, 40s. During its design phase, the tower would undergo several major alterations. On the side, that is this one, uh, which had been raised to ground following war damage, the city administration wanted to develop a high density close lot plan based on traditional curtain wall housing with small and dark inner courtyards, uh, a typical character of the ancient Milan. The BBPR architects, uh, who found such option inadequate, uh, proposed instead to concentrate the entire building volume in one tower building that would rise independently and separately from the surrounding blocks, renouncing to a part of the building volume. Such solution meant that the voids between uh, the buildings uh, still existing on the site could be shaped and organized into a kind of plaza, a kind of square, larger open space in lieu of the corridor streets. This is the first choice that would cause debate, a strong debate. The tower location in the city old center and at a walking distance from the cathedral, from the Duomo, was a strategic one. Professor, I am, I am terribly sorry to interrupt, but there is some kind of um, um, some kind of interruption with the microphone, I think. Um, sometimes we can hear you very, very well, and there are moments that there is this, uh, so maybe, I don't know, there is something with um, a loudspeakers, or, or, or um, it's as if the pages were on the loudspeaker. <laughs> so just, um, yeah, just wanted to signal this. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, can, can you hear me now? Yes, very well. Ah, okay, but uh, have I to go back? 
No, no, sometimes it's basically there is the sound of probably a paper that is moving on the loudspeaker. So um, just just okay. to give, to give be, have, it doesn't okay. happen <laughs> always, just every now and then. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Agatha. So, um, I was telling that uh, the tower's location is, is in the city old center and uh, at walking distance from the cathedral. And it is, uh, it was, uh, uh, and it is still now a strategic uh, position. But uh, uh, such a tall building would be clearly disruptive because first of all, it would engage, uh, uh -huh. Okay, with the Madonnina, that is the statue of the Virgin Mary, uh, placed atop the cathedral, according to a fascist era law, uh, it could be surpassed by no other building in the city. And in addition, being located, uh, the red one is the Velasca Tower, at the end of some of the city's major road axes, that are the ancient, uh, uh, Roman axis of the city and the medieval axis too, the tower would also be, uh, see, be, be visible from far away, just like a medieval tower. Uh, for uh, who doesn't know the Milan, this is the, the site of the last tower. The, the, you know, the dome, the Galleria and the Scala this is the Scala Theater, uh, Scala Plaza. This is the castle. This is the ancient core of Milan. These are, uh, this is the site of the ancient uh, medieval and Renaissance walls uh, where the canal and the water uh, was. And these are the Spanish uh, late uh, 17th century walls uh, with the Darsena and the canal, the Navigli that characterized, characterized Milan. So the site is at the very um, center of the city. And the Bibliere architects were uh, aware of the exceptional role the tower would play in the city, then still comprising only low and medium high building, except obviously for the monument and for the dome and for the Madonnina. Ernesto Rogers in particular had seen uh, the high rise buildings erected in US uh, by the Chicago school, uh, and of course, uh, he was inspired also by the medieval towers built in a lot of uh, Italian cities, little town like uh, San Gimignano, for example, in Tuscany. All while recognizing the huge gap between American and European cities, he did not reject uh, preemptively the high rise building as a new a modern and disruptive building type for housing and offices. On the contrary, the key tenets of BBPR theoretical research were precisely the pursuit of a relation with the context, an extremely careful approach to the pre-existing environment, and a continuous and far from imitational relationship between historical city and new architecture. The relationship with the context of the city of Milan would be precisely one of the guiding principles for the tower architectural design. For Rogers, continuity, a word that he used for the master head of uh, Casabella Continuità, the magazine he edited at the time, implied continuity implied transformation and innovation. In his mind, continuity was certainly not about forms. Uh, it, was about, it was about culture, underlying values that survived the test of time uh, and the ability to address a constantly changing reality. The idea of a realism uh, the BBPR architects pursued 
was fundamentally based on a commitment to modernity and the continuity of tradition. Roger says, uh, modernity does not contradict tradition. On the contrary, it is the ultimate evolution of tradition itself. In any case, we must find the courage to impart the sign of our age. And, more, and the more modern we are capable of being, the better our connection with tradition will be and the better our works will fit into the pre-existing environment. The concept of continuity implies change within the order of a tradition. Given such aspiration, the DPPR accepted the challenge to build a tower that had to accommodate, they say, the activities of modern life, shops, offices, apartments, and terraced villas on the top. Such statement may sound as contradictory as an urban relationship established on the ground of difference. It is one of the antinomies underlying architectural design, inevitably made of issues that must be reconciled in the dialect Rogers viewed as the necessary foundation of design. The tower clearly creates a strong contrast with its surrounding by introducing a new element in the urban scene and a new building principle that for BBPR was justified precisely by the dialogue with the surrounding context and above all by the, its central position in the city and uh, by the need to introduce uh, new emerging elements uh, as a new reference for the other city, for the larger city that was then under development uh, within its existing structure. Giuseppe Samona, the other great master of Italian post-war architecture and urbanism, who taught in Venice at the UAV, wrote about the Velasca Tower in an article for uh, L'Architettura, another architectural magazine, in 1959. With a remarkable clarity, understanding as well as uh, some dopes, he defined it as an exceptional element in the context of the city, precisely for its new constructional dimension and for the new relationships it established with the city. On the other side, he wondered about its element of continuity with the context, although we recognize the tower with some. But let us proceed with the order. Based on the very early sketches, the initial concepts developed by BBPR show an iron and glass tower. The design variation reflects a unitary shape that expands in volume while rising. The very first in iteration show a more gradual process that divides the tower into section, while later solutions reflect a more dramatic shift in volume uh, similar to the building final image. These are models of the ancient models, original models, maquettes of the tower. And Given to its figurative and technical novelty within the Italian building tradition, an American firm was hired to review and size the iron and glass design of BBPR and to estimate its cost. Based on such estimate, the company that owned the area decided that the building was too close to its American counterparts in terms of both forms and image, and above all, it would be too expensive and perhaps too much of a novelty for Milan, for the city of Milan. A decisive choice 
made at this point led to an entirely new course. Reinforced concrete rather than iron and uh, glass was selected as the material of the new tower. It was a solution that would be remarkably cheaper as well as more adequate to Italy's building tradition and to the still limited scope and abilities of its construction industry. I guess this is also the reason of the developing of the famous school of engineers that study and work with the reinforced concrete because of its poverty, its economic convenience for the poor post-war Italy, for its low cost. These are all the maquettes of uh, the last maquettes of the BBPR. Arturo Danusso, um, deciding of uh, work with the uh, reinforced concrete, was hired to develop the structural design for the tower. A major expert and a pioneer in reinforced concrete construction, Danuso also shared uh, Ernesto Rogers and BBPR ethical and humanistic view of architectural design, as well as a realist and experimental approach to construction that I can feel with. Soon after graduating from the Politecnico School of Torino, uh, Danusso was hired by the Porchedu Enterprise, the Italian licensee of the French patent of, uh, for reinforced concrete, uh, devised by Hennebeek, the first uh, firm uh, working with uh, reinforced concrete. Danusso pursued the idea of devising uh, a convincing scientific explanation for this great invention, sometimes based of, uh, on insight more than calculation, so that their structural performance could be adequately, adequately interpreted. And uh, in 1951, um, Danusso established the, the Experimental Institute for Models and Structures uh, in Bergamo, that was the world's largest uh, laboratory for model-based study in uh, structural performances in reinforced concrete. Danuso realized that the then current scientific theories failed to fully explain the behavior of reinforced concrete, uh, which actually seemed to be significantly sturdier than predicted. The construction of scale models, uh, huge scale models, was used to verify the structural features the material seemed to offer so that designer could uh, correctly estimate the structures by pushing the load test until collapse. For the Nusso scientific laws are uh, merely diminished interpretation of reality that failed to explain the phenomena they describe. As a resource, even for structural design, the Nusso relied on insight to bridge the gap between the richness of reality of life and nature and the abstract schematism of the scientific law of calculus that claimed to explain it. The construction of uh, models uh, relies on experience uh, to verify the insight of design. For this reason, insight is a necessary element for Danuso to provide, ar provide architectural design with life and uh, quality. During the post war years, uh, the focus of models based research was uh, the construction of uh, the large dams built across the national territory and uh, everywhere. Huge reinforced concrete works uh, that provided the, the best uh, bed for reinforced concrete studies in general. And the same experimental model-based verification process will be carried out, as you see in the, in the slide, 
for the equally new design for, of the Velasca Tower. But uh, which were the designer choices and process? Ernesto Rogers strongly advocated the material and technical aspect in architecture. He says, in order to be really concrete, building works should be embodied in materials. In other words, according to a precise technique. He argued that construction is the expressive tool of architecture, the essential instrument of its formal definition. Structure as a physical reality of its own that must be made visible and manifest. This is the most powerful instrument architects can rely to make their architecture expressive. The value of an architecture entirely depends on the four of its building elements, Roger said, in relation with Auguste Perret. Rogers greatly admired Auguste Perret's work, about which he wrote an insightful little book, book and was so inspired by his approach that he used it to support the concept of construction sincerity as the ethical and rational foundation of architecture. Ethic and architecture is yet another combination that Roger would strongly support as a foundation for any kind of action in a vision he shared with uh, Arturo Danusso, the engineer, as well as coherence and sincerity, clarity of action and its necessary expression. Rogers recognized Perret as an unconventional voice uh, amid the 20th century architects because he considered construction as one of architectural design's essential tool and even more because he clarified the relationship between architecture and engineer. Says uh, Rogers, Perret was the first architect to use reinforced concrete as an expressive material. He taught us once more that construction is the architect's mother tongue. An architect is a poet who thinks and talks in construction. Rogers underlines that architects should be built with sincerity but even more, turn necessity into virtue. A very difficult and ambiguous sentence. How did so the, the, this process come about in the Velasca Tower? This relation between technical and expressive uh, goal. Several technical inventions contributed to the achievement of the tower. One of these is the central rigid core that contains staircases and lifts and effectively performs a wind bracing role. And this is a solution that has become commonplace in any reinforced concrete high rise building ever since. But uh, the most remarkable feature of the tower is certainly the development of its construction and the role each part plays in concurring to these achievements. The designer's first key choice was the decision to externalize the vertical bearing elements that support the entire building, thereby creating a contrast between their slim structure and the sheer fullness of the volume they support. As a result, the braces are represented as continuous ribs large shaped section that continuously embrace the heavily wood volume through its entire length so that like a giant Doric capital, they emphatically represent the supreme effort of supporting the huge 
overhang of the tower's top section. By playing against the fullness of the wall pierced by fenestration, the uninterrupted continuity of the ribbing reflects the idea of height as successfully as uh, Sullivan's Chicago skyscrapers. The slim ribs uh, change section and uh, increasingly taper to the top uh, according to the static principle of uniform resistance. Such principles means that given an equal stress uh, on the bearing section, the section of the pilaster varies in relation to applicable loads. The pilaster has a square section at the bottom, then tapers into a T section so that it combines rigidity and the formal expression in the play of light and shadow projected on the wall. In formal terms, uh, such variant sections reflect the stress on the tall supports uh, as they bear the huge load. In order to enhance the contrast between ribs and wall continuity, the floor horizontal beams are hidden in the perimeter wall and uh, barely visible in the rhythm of the cladding panels. As a result, the load bearing structure is not fully manifest and fails to program pragmatically show how it works. Uh, the frame is hidden so that the contrast between the two very different elements can be properly expressed. The result is a compact wall mass uh, divided into two layered volumes uh, of different size. These geometric unified volumes are supported by a cage into the ribs. <clears throat> the expressive solution concisely describes a construction principle without detailing all of its components thereby showing the dramatic contrast between slim supporting elements and heavy supported mass. Such distinction between wall mass and ribs uh, placed at an interval of about six meters uh, on the long sides uh, and four meters uh, on the short sides also transpires from other elements such as the ribs that double at the corner in order to make the volume, the, the, the corner or the volume apparent, the independence of the principal rafter anchorage from the overhanging volume, or the deep shadow line that separates the two opposing volumes at the recessed 18th floor. The masonry feature that connects the tower to the surrounding built fabric is precisely what Giuseppe Samona indicates as the element and element of continuity with the context that dilutes the exceptional character on the other end of the tower with its surrounding along with the presence of the smaller scale introduced by other elements that give the large tower the rhythm and reframe it within the domesticity of uh, the houses. The section of the pilaster, the 10 meter wide beams uh, of the floor strengthen in order to perform their fraction force at the 17th floor were carefully tested and verified at the modeling laboratory in Bergamo, the, the laboratory of Danusso, in order to optimize the structure reactions to stress, almost as a way of penetrating the secret of the material's life that in this way acquires form and life 
we're always following an ethical, the ethical principle of a construction sincerity that, however, deliberately decides which element to enhance and how to make them speak for the sake of expressive power. This sincerity, this way of turning technical precision into formal elegance, uh, is typical of a certain work ethics, uh, an approach that uh, was uh, shared by Bibi Pierre and uh, Danusso. And uh, it can be equally found, I guess, in the hidden elements uh, as demonstrated by the stunning design of the skeletons in the overhanging floor that, uh, while not visible, correspond to the stress uh, the structural element are subjected to. At the bottom of the tower, a glazed uh, jutting uh, section defined the scale uh, of the plaza in relation to the surrounding buildings. The two stories, uh, uh, two stories volume provides access to the elevators that separately serve the office floors placed in the building's narrower section and the apartments in the overhanging seven floors, uh, as well as the duplex villas at the top two floors. The recessed uh, 18th floors that separates uh, the two volumes uh, contains uh, small living units for the services staff, uh, along with mechanical equipment. And uh, like any large building, the tower includes uh, variously sized offices and apartments that are designed to allow for alteration if required over time. This uh, purely functional fixture interpreted as uh, yet another inevitable character of the building's life is revealed by the irregularity and variation of administration. But uh, interestingly, unlike what many architects would probably do nowadays, BBPR tried to achieve a certain order in the elevation in spite of its necessary irregularities. Even though they chose not to hide the variety of life unfolding within. A system of small pilaster strips that support the infill panels and the window frames articulate the outer wall by dividing the span between the ribs in regular three or four pitch sections. Such distribu distribution creates a, a sort of second order, a minor rhythm that articulates and measures uh, the elevation and makes it light and vibrant. The openings are freely placed within the second order, from the windows to the deep recess of the small beautiful lodges of the apartment that looks out onto the cathedral, the Cagranda building, that is the ancient Filarete Hospital, now start of university, and in days of fine water, even the mountains that surround Milan and the Po Valley. As a giant house that rises in the center of Milan, like a huge tree, Samona said in his article, to show the city its civic, civil, and modern face, the tower is topped by a four pitched cover that evokes, in a way, a roof, a domestic roof, a truncated con volume cladded in copper that mediates the overhanging volume transition towards the sky and accommodates the remarkable 
amount of very modern technical system the tower boasts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for a wonderful speech. Um, I see that it has been uh, really, uh, really, really appreciated because I, I could observe uh, that uh, the number of viewers was increasing rapidly <laughs> during the lecture. So I think it is uh, uh, the, com the greatest compliment that uh, a speaker can get from uh, their audience. Um, so uh, I would like to, uh, to open a discussion and uh, I would like to encourage uh, the audience uh, to 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 um, ask questions. I would like to uh, encourage them to to uh, uh, to write. If you want, you can write, guys, uh, either in chat or uh, okay. In chat, we have a we have a, um, we have a comment that it was a great lecture. Uh, but if you would like to either write it in chat or if you would like to um, basically ask it. Uh, then um, please raise your hand here in, in, uh, in Zoom. Um, I was wondering, uh, because obviously observing the, the, the typologies of the flats that we, uh, that we could see in the plans, uh, I was wondering about the, um, you know, kind of... Uh, adaptability of, of the internal layouts to the contemporary needs and to the uh, contemporary needs of, of uh, Milan uh, market of uh, immobilities because uh, this is something that has evolved uh, greatly since, uh, since the tower was uh, constructed and I was really curious, do you have any observations uh, regarding this topic? Uh, this was uh, a goal of the BPR. Mm, there is a rigid structure. There was a rigid structure also because it was the first tower, it was on the reinforced concrete, but uh, uh, the BPR thought that uh, life is various, life changes, and so every architecture must adapt to life. So it's a very a rigid but simple structure. So the apartment was a thought of different size, the, and they thought they, the apartment could be a change in uh, in time during time. So, and it it was every apartment, uh, the apartments and the the technical uh, dotation of the tower was very modern because, uh, uh, for example, bathroom. Uh, had no um, window ventilation, but forced ventilation. And it is not possible in Milan now. Mm -hmm. It has been possible for this tower. So an incredible idea. And uh, another one, uh, um, they had a system of air conditioning that use the temperature of ground water for forced ventilation. It's absolutely modern idea for us also. And it was used in the 50s, in the late 50s. So uh, it, I think it is a, a kind of contradiction, a very modern idea, a very, and a very strong interest for continuity, the tradition of the city, but the places and the housing and so on must be changing in the time, adapting to the use of people, adapting to the need of people. And uh, now uh, the office is being, um, it will become uh, an hotel, is has been transforming in a hotel. And I think it will be very easy to, to transform the tower in a hotel because uh, it's very simple. <laughs> it is very regular. This is another quality that is important, important to, you know, to, 
to think when you think about uh, p the plan uh, of the apartments, the regularity, they wanted to observe it in the disposition and uh, it, it's a kind, it's a mm, very simple characteristic to use, uh, to transform, to change. Uh, you can see in, in, in the plan, Navy plan, it's very rational, no? It's very ordered. So it was a... Uh, oh, it's flexibility basically keeps it very much up to date. Uh, and, flexibility um, needs regularity and a principle of order. It could be, it could seem strange, but I think it's a uh, real true. Everybody who tried to change an apartment uh, knows that regularity and the principle of order uh, becomes an easy condition to work inside the apartment. So, so it is allowed to, for example, combine apartments that are inside and uh, doing this. It's not a. It's it's a protected building, right? For 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 for, for now, uh, like for conservation reasons and purposes. Yes, but uh, it will transform in a, in an hotel. They say I, I have not seen the project the design, but uh, okay, it would be more useful. I've been in an apartment because it's not so easy to go inside an apartment of a woman who lived there. That has, I think, could be this apartment with this little loggia. And uh, I thought it's, it's very strange, a lot just so high, a lot just so dangerous, but uh, it has been built uh, like a kind of little courtyard inside the house uh, and from where you can see all Milan. It, it's an incredible view from the top of the center of Milan uh, to see uh -huh. all the city, to see the mountains, to see the flat when uh, it's not cloudy. <laughs> it's a day like today, the weather is good. Uh, it's a very beautiful site. But uh, I think that the Velasca Tower is an except exceptional building. I think uh, they were aware that you, you can build uh, such an exceptional building because it is exceptional, because it stands at the right place, uh, because uh, it must demonstrate, demonstrate uh, its exceptionality. Uh, I think it's not, it's in, in Italian cities, it's different, uh, Italian cities are very different from American city where every building is high mm -hmm. and there is a distinction from uh, one building to another. BBPR thought that the Velasca Tower in that part of Milan the need was to have an emerging uh, building. It was important to put a sign to, to sign the center of the city, of the modern city, not only the ancient city, because there was the dome, uh, the cathedral, but uh, Milan, after the war, needed to have a sign, the demonstration of uh, the modernity of the city, the capability of a city of constructing new building and uh, use new technology and so on. The position was right. And it is a dialogue between the cathedral, the ancient town, the ancient city, the ancient monuments and the modern ones. So it is a concept of rebirth practically to that. that um... It's a concept of rebirth, uh, very conscious of the structure of the city, of the character of the city, of the identity of the city. It is, I think, the reason because the Velasca Tower has become during the year a kind of symbol of Milan, of all these things. And it's still a very beautiful <laughs> building. <No. laughs> It really is. It is. It is absolutely amazing. It's difficult to get in, though. No, I it's, must very say that. It's, it's very, very difficult, difficult to to to. Um, I think it, yet it, uh, it was possible some years ago during uh, Salone del Mobile because they opened the tower mm -hmm. and it was possible to go up to the floor because at the top there are the mm -hmm. the, the villas. The yeah. two floors uh, apartment, the, the most beautiful huh. apartment with the terrace. That's this one. And it was incredible.
I was very astonished. Yes, it is. It is a fabulous building. Uh, okay. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you very, very much. Um, um, I would like to see, I, I cannot really see the chat very well. Uh, so if uh, anyone would like to um, contribute to this discussion, please, please speak, speak up. I think the lecture was really, really fantastic. <laughs> Thank you, Agda. No, really, really. <laughs> it was. But you know, the, I don't know if students, the Polish students know, but the Velasca Tower, um, with the Velasca Tower, a great debate began uh, because uh, it was a very, very different from the standard of modern movement, uh, but also from uh, international style. So it was a great changing in thinking about architecture. BBPR wanted to renew the architecture, but uh, trying uh, a bound with the tradition of architecture. Be modern, but also traditional. This was the, the challenge of BBPR and uh, this is the reason because Reiner Bannum wrote this article against uh, archi Italian architecture. It was um, a tradition of a uh, modern architecture, he said. Mm -hmm. It was like, a great and interesting debate. I think interesting because also, as usual, a debate uh, lets go on <laughs> the research. So this is another reason because the, the last hour became so important for Milan, for Italian culture, for Italian architecture, and maybe not only Italian, because uh, it became the end of a kind of a, uh, way of doing architecture that was not so interested for but still co correct me if i'm if, if i'm wrong because i i i i i i, I may be um i was uh, uh, i have never actually observed uh, a building that would be quite like it so i think that this uh, combination of uh, uh, the, 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 the the exposed structure, the, the um, obvious citation to, to, to uh, ancient architecture. This uh, approach um, uh, has not been followed by, by, by I don't know, other uh, Italian cities in this form, uh, or Italian or... So it was not... Uh, <clears throat> it was not... Uh... I didn't understand. It was exactly. not. Uh, it was not followed. It was not. Uh, what exactly was uh, not followed? This uh, this combination of uh, the the, the um, totally contemporary structure and and concept uh, with the combination and with the inspiration with the with the nation mm -hmm. spirit and and um, and in this form it is it remained very particular and it remained very characteristic of Milan. The forms uh, were very particular, but the concept, uh, uh, the research uh, between uh, architectural structure and uh, architectural expression was, uh, has been an, a, a topic of the research in that year, in those years, um, also by the engineer school because some work of Nervi, there was a great relation between uh, architects and engineers in that year, uh, because there was a, uh, an interesting school of engineers and an interesting school of uh, architects that thought that uh, it would be necessary to find, uh, the re to define the relation between architecture and uh, engineers. So sometimes it's, go through engineering and sometimes go to architecture without engineering. But uh, this research was very important. Also in the um, 
the Tower of Gioponte, in the Pirelli, but also in the work of engineers that worked with architects. So all the school of Luigi Ner Pierluigi Nervi, Morandi, are not only uh, structural uh, works, uh, are structure engineers, uh, structural work, but that try to find an architectural expression, a force that it's not only deriving from calculus. Uh, it was also the idea of Nervi coming from Danuso and so on. Uh, calculus is just calculus. So you need to have an, an idea, an insight that you must verify. And the idea is helped by an architectural goal. So is helped by what you want to express. So you can define different form of a structure. There is not only one structure, you can choose. Okay. So uh, how you, do you can choose? An engineer can choose like, as an architect can choose, but uh, they need to have an idea of expressiveness, uh, an artistic idea in a way. So the cooperation of engineers has been very strong in that year. The forms has been different, but also the famous, uh, sadly famous uh, Morandi Bridge in Genoa was an incredible uh, work of uh, not only engineers, uh, because it's easy for an engineer, but also a research of expressiveness uh, to show what a, a bridge is. Uh, no, it was um, an absolutely beautiful uh, form. It is. It was uh, an an amazing uh, an amazing bridge. It was yeah. something that you remembered even when uh, passing on it. It was a bridge. Uh, um, I just uh, underlined to, to our uh, listeners, we are talking, unfortunately, about Ponte Morandi, about Morandi Bridge, the one that has collapsed three years ago and uh, has been now substituted by uh, the new bridge by Renzo Piano. Uh, Renzo Piano has uh, designed uh, the new bridge uh, in a very, very fast uh, modality and uh, this bridge was uh, completed in uh, less than two years. So it was uh, a, an extremely fast, um, uh, fast work. Uh, but uh, it is nice, but uh, it is not as expressive. I mean, if you are driving through it, it is as if you were driving through a normal road. Uh, whereas uh, Ponte Morandi gave you the shiver of of being on 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 something that is absolutely fabulous. Um, yeah. So 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 yes. Um, Ponte Morandi gave the identity of that part of Genoa because absolutely. it was intended to to give a narration of what a bridge is. It's not only the solution of a structural problem. This is the difference. Mm -hmm. I think yes. the difference also the BPR, the architects uh, will, was, were very conscious, uh, was very aware, but also the engineer in that uh, period and Danusso, that was the master, the chief uh, engineer, and also the school, uh, Luigi Nervi, Morandi, Mosmeci, in, in different forms, uh, tried to follow. And uh, if you read the writings by Morandi and all this engineer, they say exactly this. Engineer is not only calculus, you need uh, insight, you need an idea, you need to follow and to explain what the bridge, the hole, the whatever is. Uh, and you have to demonstrate their identity through the forms. Uh, it's very interesting. I think it's a, a very interesting research. Okay, I really, really thank you again for your lecture. I will, I shall ask once again, but I don't see any little yellow hands up. Uh, no, so um, uh, let me let me thank you once again. Uh, you. We hope that. Uh, we will be able to uh, see each other in person shortly, uh, either in Poznan or 
uh, or in Milan. Uh, I have a, a short uh, information uh, for to our, for all our listeners. Uh, tomorrow um, we will host uh, Professor Rosolski with his lecture on uh, uh, near nearly zero energetical um, buildings, and in this case, he will be talking about the conservation of. Uh, of historical buildings. I think the case study will be uh, the, this uh, medieval uh, Renaissance um, building that is located in, uh, in the, near the old market in Poznan. So um, I, I, at least I expect that will be the, 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 the case study that he will, he will like to discuss. Uh, for uh, all the students and all the participants, um, if you have not voted for your uh, favorite graphic uh, work, uh, that is the, the, the um, that, um, that, that are published on our website, you know, the second uh, second turn of uh, of our competition, then please go and vote and support us with these really hard decision that the decisions that are in front of us. And with this, I would like to thank you all and wish you good evening, good evening, and and good night. And hopefully, we will see each other tomorrow. Uh, Professor, I, I cannot hear you. I think you have switched off your. <laughs> Okay. No, no, I just want to thank you, <laughs> to thank you everybody, <laughs> and to thank you, Agatha, for your kind invitation to this interesting... No, you're welcome, it was wonderful, it was quite wonderful. <laughs> thank you. So, see you, hopefully see you soon, and um, let's keep it, keep in touch. Bye. Ciao, ciao. Ciao, Bye. ciao. ciao. <laughs>